told you lately that I love you. Oh, you already have one. Thank you very much. I do. Just wanted you to know that. Are we live yet, Alex? Alex was one of my students. I understand. <coughs> J.D. want to pop in and see if he's having technical difficulties. Ask him if we're live. This G is available on the website? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We... We're on the air. Oh, oh, oh I'm in great. trouble. And I was just oh, and here I was. That's okay. Excellent. We're just being our normal selves, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's Thursday, March 21st, 2019, and this is a meeting of the Ordinance Committee uh, called the Order. Uh, could we take roll call, please, Tracy? Council Hamill? Here. Council Foley? Here. Council Katarina? Here. Uh, approval of the minutes from the February 21st, 2019 meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Um, it, with the ordinance, we allow for public comment at this point. So if you have anything you would like to speak about, I don't know why we don't have our microphone, but if you would speak really loudly. And uh, actually, do you mind? Well, we could mic speak. No, I don't see the microphone. Uh, I don't know. It's well, not going to amplify it over the voice, but sure. Yeah, why don't we do that? I feel a lot of There we go. And just give your name and address, and then which which part you're speaking to. And we're going to give you a hot seat. Thanks, Jay. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Thank you. I'm Alice in Bristol. I live at Six Bayview Avenue, and um, I wanted to comment on the uh, language that's uh, suggested as the addition for the site plan review. And first of all, I want to say it's very, it's very positive to add something that addresses the uh, public notification and in, including the public as part of the process. And with the language under consideration, I, first thing I wanted to do was suggest that the notification be sent uh, within uh, at least 21 days of application meeting date versus seven to ensure that all property owners receive notice and can pl plan accordingly with seven days, especially in the off season if there's not a lot of property owners that are here. You know, something got dropped on a Friday. They may not get it till Tuesday. The meeting's on Thursday. They're in California. So it doesn't really, you know, give them the opportunity to, to for input. Um, then, um, although, and I, although I know that this language, I believe, from going to long-range planning was triggered by the Piper Shores contract uh, zoning review, I think it's also important while the ordinance is being audited to consider public interest in a broader context. Um, Article 1 of the site plan review ordinance states that the purpose of the site plan review is to ensure that the design layout construction constitutes suitable development and will not result in a detriment to the neighborhood community or environment. But there's there's nothing specific in the ordinance that protects abutters or neighbor interests other than the right to speak at public hearings. And a good example of this was the, I think, I wasn't at any of these meetings, but I, from what I've heard, a very strong opposition to the Verizon cell phone tower. Um, a location in the Senate district in the fall. And I did read the article in the Press Herald, and although there was strong opposition, Verizon argued that, according to the Press Herald, that they were following the rules and guidance for the cell phone towers ordinance. And um, Tom Hall actually was quoted to say it's fair to crit criticism that the ordinance as written is not sufficient to protect a butter's interests. So just with site plan review in general, I mean, my specific interest in this has to do with the Higgins Beach uh, character code. Um, I just think that it would be great to, to put some language in that more specifically um, defines or helps, at least helps to define what's detrimental 
because what might be considered beneficial in some parts of town may be considered detrimental in other parts of town and vice versa. And there's really nothing in the ordinance right now that other than um, property owners being able to, to speak at public hearings to protect them. So. Thank you. Yep. Uh, anyone else wish to speak to anything on the uh, agenda? Okay, with that, the uh, public portion is closed. Thank you. Dawn, you... Well, I, I, I think I'll just wait until we... Well, it's the... Yeah, the next item up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, revisions to site ordinance about our notification. Jay. Sure. Yeah, I think you have some input, and I saw sure. something. Don, you have a flyer stuck on your feet. There. Okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks very much. Uh, so I want to be sure folks can hear you. So hopefully. Or if you want to just maybe sit I'll right up it. here. Or, yeah. Right here. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe that's do. Um, Sure, you want me to introduce this? Uh, so yeah, if you I'd, yep. could, and I noticed I've been out straight all afternoon, mm -hmm. and I noticed Karen Martin said something, that's actually and I didn't a, get a chance That's to, on another agenda. That's on I another so agenda. Okay, I can, I can speak to that if you'd like, but <laughs> okay. um, so this item came up really by way of the Ordinance Committee requesting staff to take a look at um, elevating or including requirement for site plan review for, I'm sorry, for public notice for site plan review. Because um, it's really one of the few applications that comes to one of our boards that we don't do a butter notification. As we talked about previously, we do notification for site plans, uh, I'm sorry, subdivisions, <laughs> contract zones, board of appeals applications, um, but not commercial site plans. So um, really this is, we looked at a number of our uh, uh, um, adjoining and surrounding communities and 500 feet seemed it varied somewhere between 250 and 500 feet, so we sort of went on the uh, on the more conservative side of 500 feet. Um, it's so fairly straightforward language. Um, I will just just to uh, raise or speak to the the issue that was raised by Miss mm -hmm. Bristol yep. um, in terms of timing. Um, we do our planning board meets every three weeks as it is. We get applications in basically 21 days before the meeting. We spend a week really figuring out if the application's complete. And then, so the agendas are typically set about 10 to 12 days before the meeting. So it'd be difficult, as it stands now, without adjusting significantly the development review time period to move much more than the seven days notice. We could, um, certainly 21 days would require significant changes to our, but um, just sort of for what that's worth. Um, so I guess that's all I'll say on that at this time. Can I ask a question about that? Is the notification, the notification generally by mail? Yes. By postal mail? Yep. So if there is any way to maybe do it by email or something like that, which I know is a whole probably whole another can of worms, that um, that might you know be more timely than you know written you know notifications. I can agree. Yeah, or I can answer that oh. too. No, go you're, ahead, you're the chair. Go for it. No, well, I was just going to say um, email is hard because we don't have emails for everybody. So that's why we do the postal and 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 generally court proceedings. If you're talking about judicial proceedings, mm -hmm. they all say they want it by snail mail. Even though right. in today's world that right. doesn't work real well. Um, um, I had something else, Jean Go ahead, Larissa. There are also, for residents that are interested in, we do have the planning board agenda is posted to the website. Um, as soon as it is available, which is prior to that seven-day notice, so people are able to check the website and. Um, but then you had, but that assumes that you know. I know. Something going I, on. It's not ideal, but it is a way for people that really want to be right. kind of up to date about what's happening on the planning board to be able to check that agenda every three weeks, and and see what's up going on there. Can you uh, clarify the question? So when you say seven. Days. Is it seven business days or is it seven days? Uh, you know, it's real estate broker. It says at least seven days prior, so I would say that's seven weekdays, so we're sending it out business days. business days, so we're probably sending it out, frankly, on a Friday because, uh, you know, Well, because oh, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, maybe there's a way to meet. I, I do think 
with snail right. mail in particular, you know, it could be a day or maybe we could meet somewhere between 10 and 12 days, you know. Um, yeah, I, and that way it would alleviate your fear of the three week period piece. Could you do 10 days? Or was that given what you got? Because I understand the process. Me, uh, look at it, then you're covered, you're, Well, at least you're covering more than two weekends. So I think about it like that when, to Ms. Bristol's point, when people are traveling, a lot of times they travel a Saturday to a Saturday, or and they may not, but this way, you know, if it arrives on a Friday, they still open it by a Monday. The United States Post Maybe. Office does have a very cool thing you can get now, because I travel a lot, and you can check your phone every day to see what's coming to your mailbox. But you're supposed to be on vacation. I'm not supposed You're to look kidding. at that. No, no I know. Where it's coming? I know people who. Yeah, do. it'll it'll have a picture of of the piece of mail. Yeah. So in, yeah. Just something. in case anybody yeah. wondered. The beauty ten of being on vacation ten, is not. Ten days too seems long. like that may be plausible, but I'd like if we're going to make that adjustment, I'd like to talk to my staff a little yes. bit more. Who? Yeah, that's fine. I mean. This is a good example that if you went downstairs in the last couple of days, I think we got nine new applications. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so, again, we're doing that completeness. We don't want to send out notifications no. if we ultimately wind up pulling something from an agenda. So there's, um, so I'd like, if, if we do, if you do want to make adjustments, and it's certainly something we could talk about through the council process. I mean, it right. just, re I guess I'll just note that even after it leaves your desk, we still have probably two months till. Yeah, right. So, Certainly something right. we can look at and happy to do it at this level or whatever level you direct uh, my staff to do that, but um, I wouldn't want to commit to anything so, sitting here. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's great that uh, the suggestion came up and it's uh, something that hadn't occurred to me um, and it seems like a fair uh, request. The only thing I'd say uh, procedurally, uh, I prefer that we smoke it out and come with a you know pre- solid recommendation for the council so we don't have to drag the council through the weeds on mail versus email and timeline right. you know what i mean like right. it'd be great if we're totally baked yeah. i'm mixing metaphors here so, so do maybe, we maybe, want, maybe not so what we could do is just move to send it back to jay and yeah. the planning board and get their input on yeah. any other doors can i also ask jay is the seven days consistent <laughs> with the other um notification well, standards in the other Areas generally, I didn't look too closely at that, but I, I mean that was that was probably on the on the quickest side. I think some other towns only meet once a month. No, meant for so, us. So if we oh, notify oh, for, for us, I'm right, sorry for our other notification um, deadlines. What do we have? Because it would be great if they know, were consistent I, I across. I don't mm -hmm. recall offhand. Okay. Um, Tody, typically know, right? for so, I don't. I don't think Tody would know offhand for, um, for because it's really generated out of our department. Um, so for zoning changes, I know we have to note we have to put notification in the newspaper thirteen days, but I think mailing is still seven days for zone changes. I would have to I would have to take yeah. a, I would have to take. A I think that that would be if the mm -hmm. if the committee is interested. I think that um, where we were drafting some of this to kind of keep language consistent mm -hmm. and process consistent, that we should then keep process consistent. And so if this committee does decide to recommend a, an extended time, then I would encourage you to also consider bringing all of those back so that we have a consistent in alignment. Uh, right. Yeah, it's easier to manage so, that way too. Right. Absolutely. So all of the notification for all different I know what those are, Mr. Yep. <laughs> so so we need a motion. <laughs> uh, so I move that we ask Mr. Chase to uh, double check on, with his staff on any complications or what what the effect of changing the date to Sarah, the number of days to 10 days would have. And, and, and report back to us at the next meeting. Okay. Don? Uh, no, we, I thought we brought up, but I just had a comment before we move to the next Do you want a second? Uh, yes, yeah, second. Sorry. Thank you. Can we'll we vote? Are we ready to vote for a discussion? Uh, just one thing I was going to, for the record, uh, and, I, and I try not to make a habit of, uh, you know, correcting uh, people, but uh, this actually did, came out of a, a constituent letter, a Mr. Me show related to uh, uh, cutting, clear cutting, cutting trees. tall, uh, mature growth uh, pine mm -hmm. trees around the Bailey's uh, restaurant on the Pine Point Road. So, uh, and, and that's kind of what what triggered oh, it. So, just just so we okay. you know, correct to the, rec the record on that. Thank you. I remember that. Thank you.
So we're ready to move? Sure. To move it back sure. to Jay and crew, and then they're going to report back on what they think about yep. timelines. So all in favor? Yeah, it's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, quick, quick question on this procedural question. Yes. So if Jay gets a quick answer, do we have to wait a month? Yeah. Is, yeah. There's no rush. Okay. <laughs> this is government. <laughs> <laughs> All good oh things God, to those who please. wait. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's only a bureaucrat, all right? Uh, okay, item six, revisions to the harmonization. It sounds like a music thing. Contracts <laughs> on processes. I thought we were going to lose that term, but it's sticking. So sorry for that. <laughs> I'm Jay, where are we with this? What's going on? All right, so... Uh, I came before you last at your last meeting and we started to talk about are there ways to look at you know really making an amendment process similar to an adoption process and really the concern became around when does the public get notified when does planning board and council really do a deeper dive mm -hmm. and it seemed like to some that at the at particularly for amendments that that maybe wasn't happening when it when it needed to be happening. So the language before you essentially just says, look, you know, a new contract zone or amended contract zone, they both go through the same process. So the first thing that's going to happen is the butters are going to get notified and the planning board and the council are going to get together for a joint meeting. There'll be a formal public hearing at that meeting. And so there'll really be a a fuller vetting process that occurs for whether it's a new uh, contract zone or an amended contract zone. Um, we did, and I should have mentioned this with the last item, subsequent to your, your meeting, um, this did go before the Long Range Planning Committee. Um, they, you know, had a bunch of good thoughts. I know, uh, Don, you were there. Yep. Councilor Hamill was there. I was thought, thought I had that right. But <laughs> um, so they had some good thoughts around it, and I think one of the other things that came up was, uh, that's been talked about is, you know, when when is an amendment an amendment? You know, when you're adding, it's pretty clear if you uh, have a nail salon and you want to add uh, cutting hair to the existing building. Well, that's clearly an amendment. But is an amendment adding additional lands? And sort of how do you deal with that? Really, in, in, as I thought, thought it through and, and spoke to folks about it, it seemed like by just merging the processes, it really doesn't matter what you call it, because at the, right at the outset, you're everything's going through the same process. So, so to the point of a, a Piper Shores, and you know, it's the same user, it's abutting or an adjoining lands, although it's across the street, and I know there's some, you know, should this be or shouldn't it be? Again, if the process is the same, and this, you know, the, the application materials are all the same, and the time frames are all the same, the notifications are all the same, it felt like maybe that, that's one way of Approaching it, and so that's that's the approach that's taken here. And certainly, uh, if there's concerns about that, we can talk about that. Um, the one thing that is added in here under Section 4A um, did just add a couple of waiver requirements for applications again that are really doing very minor. If they're not increasing their land holdings, if they're not changing their building, but they're you know maybe just doing signage, they don't have to do a site inventory and analysis type thing. So they're they're just a, just a few things, and they're highlighted again under the first uh, four or five bullets there under Section 4A. Um, so. And you're talking about that wavering? Yep. That it, says maybe waiver by the town planner. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I did have a conversation uh, with our town attorney. I asked him to review this. I said, well, okay, I don't think I should be, or the town planner, I don't, you know, whoever the, is sitting in my seat should have the last word on what gets waived. And he said, Absolutely, the council can sort of override you. you know, so, so this is just for completeness of application. Mm -hmm. But then later on, it says council can ask for any additional information they want through this process. So, so at initial application, the town planner at the time can say, this doesn't seem necessary. If council disagrees, then they just say, hey, we, we want that. So, um, so you have that. Um, is, oh, this, yep. is this what Karen said? To so, the so yes. So Karen, Karen Martin had she had, uh, she's the psycho director, as I'm sure the three of you know, or five of you know, but others may not. She's our economic development corporation uh, director. 
and she had a meeting with the SEDCO board this morning. The SEDCO board and had concerns. I'm going to summarize an email, but I can, I'll certainly share it. Um, this morning, um, so the question is, so I'm trying to paraphrase it, but um, and maybe I'll just read it. The SECO board discussed the contract zone process amendments this morning at our board meeting. I know you'll be discussing the amendments to the process tonight at the ordinance committee, so I want to bring to your attention one of the board's concerns. In the current process, whether there's an amend amendment to a zone or the zone is new, applicants are required to do the engineering for a preliminary site plan before they know if the contract zone is approved. In the case of the most recent applicants, our understanding is that the design and engineering expenses for site plan are running in the hundreds of thousands up to a million dollars. The SEGO board is suggesting that the details involved in the site plan planning process may not be needed for the council to make their initial decision on the contract zone. The applicant should be very clear up front what, what standards they, are, they need relief from. The planning board would still offer their comments on the implications of exempting these standards and whether they think this is a reasonable concept, then it goes back to council. The council can then make their decision on whether the public benefit is sufficient enough to earn the relief requested by the applicant. Uh, alternatively, the applicant could be request, required to do a sketch plan rather than preliminary site plan. Sketch planning could focus on providing more information around topics that are being changed by the proposed contract. Um, so, so in essence, the issue is what, what level of preliminary site plan review is really necessary? Do they need to do sort of their full stormwater analysis and traffic analysis and landscaping plans and lighting plans at the outset, um, which is required right now? And I'm, again, happy to share this. So I had a question. So um, this is an interesting point that they bring up, and, and I think a, a very good one. Um, so in an application process, they would be required to do a full site plan as a, in the way it works today, but not in an amendment. Is that correct? In both, in both cases, they, they would have. In both cases, they would be required to do that. Yes, they do an amend. Yep. That, so SEDCO is asking if they could do a sketch instead of a full site plan um, for, for both, for you know, what would essentially be uh, an amendment or an application. Correct. So that's l less of a requirement now than is required for an application or, or a, an amendment. I think that they're uh, asking, since we've got the ordinance opened. Pardon? I think that they're saying, look, you guys have this ordinance opened. Yep. Let's, there, these are some things that have been bothering us all along. Yep. Let's make those changes now while you've got it in front of you. Okay. And she just yes. talked to some about long range planning. She thought it should yes, be Yes, and so she was just asking if the ordinance committee, if you have interest in sort of exploring this idea, do you want it to go back to long range planning committee for further discussion or? Huh. Um, so the only, my reaction to that is that I, I'd be, you know, uh, open to hear other discussion first before providing an opinion, if you'd like, if you'd like to go that way. Um, no, go ahead. So my, my thinking on that is that it's a, this is a, a sort of a new, a new idea. Um, which I think goes beyond what we had spotted as an opportunity to address. So, so I, you know, I think the question for us is, you know, how full a you know review do we want to make of the thing? Because this does seem to me to be a real horse of a different color. And, and I do. That was another thing that uh, Miss Martin did say to me is that the Senko board doesn't want their comments to necessarily slow this down. That if, 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 if ordinance committee and council is comfortable with this, that, that they're comfortable with this as well. I think to the point that Ms. Crockett made is, hey, it's open, let's throw you know everything into the pot and see what, see what it looks like. So there's no reason to say that we couldn't proceed, again, sort of with the, I'll call it the, the sort of harmonization. Yeah. <laughs> And then request there to be further discussion. I, you know, it, so I would defer to you, Jay, yeah. on that, frankly, because as I said, Karen said that, and I started yeah. reading, and I'm like, oh, I don't have time to really absorb mm -hmm. everything. And as Dawn said, it's something I see it new. I mean, I was trying to keep it simple, stupid, sort of. Yeah, I was hoping but, it would. But you know, the more people look at things, things come up. So part of me, and I'm looking at 
UK Meals PR input is, you know, we've been working on this. It doesn't mean we can't send their ideas to long-range planning, and that's down the line. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I'd like to hear from others. Yeah, a great point. I, I would love to hear the pros and cons. I mean, yeah. it would appear to me that without that initial site plan and some of those preliminary pieces, that there would be a, a more challenging, um, you know, approval factor and it's, it's harder to say this is something when you don't have all the information that which is why it's been done that way right mm -hmm. yeah I would and, imagine and frankly I, I don't know that I'm in a good position to speak at the pros and cons because I really yeah. heard about this three four or five hours ago I myself so so I mean a I would say yeah. I think we're, we would all yeah. agree that um, we definitely we're open to exploring mm -hmm. it not today. We, need, yeah. more we will yeah. need a lot more information yeah. and then some feedback from. So I guess yeah, that's it fine. would be uh, again a, mo a motion to send to right. long range planning for discussion and then come back to us. Yeah, we'll be separate because what we're working on right. is right. this right yeah. here. Yeah. Right. Karen's just saying, hey, we got something else. Okay, so we can so, do that after, or we can or I can that. talk to Larissa when we're setting up our next month, saying we can talk about it. So I guess yeah, I, 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 I think I think that's sort of the point. It's either I, I think today it would be good for if ordinance committee is interested in moving this forward that that sort of be the okay. motion and we can have this okay. other item right. out there as something to work on. Or if your your interest is to continue working on this, then that be the motion that you send it right back to Long Rangers to explore this. Um, so I uh, if I if I may, I'd like to propose a motion that we move forward on the you know the. Changes proposed, uh, uh, what we're calling a harmonization. It, it really will not streamline the process. You know, uh, it will just follow the. You know, we have the same process for both, and um, I, I would suggest we move forward on that and nail down. You know, one shingle if we can, and then proceed to you know do the rest of the roof, and and, and make sure that we give this question from um, Ms. Martin proper you know proper audience and process, and you know try to process that some. Uh, you know, separately. So it's a form of a motion? The form of a motion that we uh, uh, move this forward uh, for uh, the next step, which I believe would be town council review and approval. As this. Public as as okay. Yeah. Katie? Um, can I ask one more question? Sorry, yeah, sure, before yeah. I second that. So, Jake, go one more time. Yeah. The, the pieces in red. Um, Piece, yeah. You know, the, the red. Red and blue, sorry. Well, <laughs> the, the, the piece around waving. Yes. Um, yep. Can you just. Tell me again what is and isn't included in that. Uh, so it's just those two bullets. So there's a site analysis right. that describes the major features of the property. Mm -hmm. And so I would say in an application where they're not proposing, where someone's coming in for a sign that might not otherwise be allowed. They're not otherwise changing the, youth, the building. A good example is Cabela's. Yeah. They've come in for about six different amendments. Five of them have been around signs. <laughs> you don't really need a site inventory. I wouldn't think that. Right, for something so, like that. So I think as town planner, that's probably something I would so something waive. something insubstantial on the Unsubstantial. Same property. But if they were building a new building on on, or expanding okay. a parking lot, I'd that probably clerk. say, you know what? Right. But again, even if the town planner, whoever's in the seat, council can at ultimately get, you know, can say, no, we, we do want that information. Okay. So, um, and then the other one is... A conceptual development plan. Again, if there is no real development, there's just a new sign. It doesn't yep. seem like we need a full site plan because gotcha. we already have it. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, second. All those in favor? Ooh. Very good. And I will circle back with Miss Martin. Yeah, if you would. Yeah, Absolutely. let her know that. Great. Yep. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. All right. Marissa, I'm going to turn to you for this traffic warning. What okay. are we doing now? We get some more traffic well, warnings. I think I fielded a phone call from one of your um, colleagues asking for this to perhaps be tabled until next month. Yeah. Would that be Mr. Hamill? That would be Mr. Hamill. <laughs> yeah. Crazy guy. So maybe I could explain myself. I'll try. Um, uh, you know, this seems like a fairly routine matter. We're just, you know, uh, what's been proposed here is. Uh, formalizing what I uh, understand to be enforcement policies, you know, uh, around parking. Uh, it have to do with, with hours and uh, of operation. Um, 
and these were two separate policies that were adopted, I think, in July of last year um, by the town manager. Uh, you know, pretty routine, pretty straightforward. But these are known as, a, and help me here, Larissa, but these are known as policies, enforcement policies. They, they don't really show up in the ordinance. Right. Uh, and I don't really know where they reside otherwise. But they there... just reside in the ether of the local town government. So the, the challenge is that by not codifying them in ordinance, there is a risk to challenging them from an enforcement standpoint. Right, right. So, the, you know, they say sometimes timing is everything. So, um, you know, uh, a flag went up for me when I saw this at first because it, it got directly into the topic of parking at Pine Point Co-op. So... <laughs> I don't know if you've been watching TV lately, but uh, you know that that is a very uh, uh, contentious issue uh, going forward. It will be uh, uh, there will be a lot of discussion, a lot of work on that uh, as the council seeks to to implement the approval of the sale of the co-op, which was approved last night. So, you know, the only thing I'd say is that I just I think the timing of this is uh, uh, uncomfortable for me. Number one and number two, I. I just like to push it to the next meeting so we have a little bit more of a chance to understand what's in there because the stuff that's that's being recommended is as language that looks simple actually gets into um, marking parking spaces and other issues which are really material matters uh, you know in the in the agreements that were were approved last night so I I personally like a little bit more time and would ask uh, if uh, uh, we could handle it that way and I defer to my uh, my fellow counselors uh, for you know for, the, for that and I'd like to make a motion if I may a subject to discussion that we just push it back to the next meeting to give us a little bit more time to understand the, uh, the impact and the repercussions that would still give us time to be able to get these in place for the summer season and which will be busy so that's my um, so you have a motion so I would like to make a motion for discussion, for discussion. Yeah. Yeah. and then we can. Yeah, I'd like there. to make a motion for discussion, and then yeah. uh, I already seconded. We're fully past you. We're good. Okay, so <laughs> all right, so now we're in discussion. Now so we're, we're in discussion. discussion. <laughs> um, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, no, no. I I have no. I, I don't think there's uh, anything urgent in here that I can't wait a month. Um, if it's going to make you more comfortable, I I, you know, anytime we. Touch parking and beaches, I get shivers down my spine. So um, it is always worthwhile to take some extra time if all three of us aren't 100% comfortable. So I, I'm, I mean, I don't see anything in here that's leaking out at me as saying, you know, warning Will Robinson or anything like that. But I also have no problem waiting another 30 days. Laura, I have a question. For yes, ma'am. Um, so right now, the the language that's stricken here because it's stricken in red, so that's why. That's because I wanted to highlight that that was a That's, change. All right, but but the usually it's red right over the black. So it, right now it is the it is I'm sorry in, the handicapped parking spaces the, are because my concern is make sure we have the handicapped parking. The, the things that are in, currently have strike throughs are okay. existing ordinance okay. that are in uh, okay. enforceable glad, as we speak. I'm glad she clarified that because I I read it the same way. If it's black and stricken through, then I no, think no, of it as the okay. old. Okay, you know I, mean? I will make notes. My concern is I definitely want to make sure we've we've got the handicap parking. Correct? Yes, I mean that's critical, um, and that's taken care of there. So really, the only change here would be that commercial boat trailer parking and non-authorized commercial vehicles. Is that correct? Am I reading? Yeah, those were those were part of a community services project that was undertaken. Um, okay. So they, I believe, are currently marked in the way that is represented here. I okay. could be incorrect about that, or they soon will be. The, that was part, passed as part of the budget last year, was to, to, a, to um, make some changes down there at that parking lot. Um, so I, I have... Sorry, I'll wait. Sure. Well, I don't, I, I'm now, anyway, so I, the proposal was passed as policy last summer. It is still in effect now. Um, it just simply has not been codified as ordinance. So, in the spirit of uh, knowing the difference between a policy that's been accepted and codifying it into ordinances, um, you know, that's, you know, that's a, uh, you know, parking space of a different color. Let me just use that. So, the, Not to be funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I did some checking, and uh, I'm getting a 
slightly different story about was actually agreed to and who participated in the. Uh, this is from people who participated in the process, um, and and also uh, this is information from the uh, you know the, the the committees, the Coastal Harbor Committee and the Shellfish Committee, uh, as well as the chair of the committee, uh, indicated he, he did not recall that this was. You know this was enforced and this was agreed and that uh, the, and even the spaces were, were painted and there was all questions about all of those so because of that that that's really you know my motivation for taking time to verify exactly what what's been done and not done and then what the gap is and how do we move forward to close that mm -hmm. so that that's the reason for it it seems like something simple but it's uh, you know I, I wish to say that it, it was but it it's it's simply not, and frankly, now it's even uh, less simple than it, we may have hoped it was before. So, okay, question: um, So both of those committees, right, keep notes and on things that, that have been agreed upon or not. So that should be easy enough for us to dig up before the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Can we work on that? Yeah, I mean, hey, I'm hoping that I, I have it all wrong and that uh, no, I just fine, know that what what often gets said or done in the meeting is sometimes often different from what people hear or do in practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we often, I, I think I, I said these same words last night, a lot of times we, we do things every day um, and it just becomes a normal part of what we do. And so we think it's the way it's supposed to be, even though that may not necessarily, um, you know, gliding through a stop sign is breaking the law, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. So. Um, <coughs> I do it every day, probably. Anyway, so I would love to see if there is some of that mm -hmm. out there that we can. And I don't have I don't have an issue either with uh, pushing this back okay. for another month just Great. to Get look at to see it. what the background yeah. is and why why it's needed. So, yeah. what was his original motion? To tables to table to table, to table until, until Sorry. next meeting, correct? Yes, yes. correct. Um, and we have a second. I did. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Prior to moving on, Councillor Caterina. I'm sorry. Um, may I, uh, Councillor Hamill, could I send you an invitation to come in and give me a very specific list of your concerns um, within the next couple of weeks so that I yeah. can reach out and get them? I'll be sure to do that. Great. Yeah. Awesome. All right, where are we now? Oh, garage sales, item 8, revisions to chapter 1016 garage yard sale ordinance. Woo -hoo. Nice. This one comes to us from the Lions Club. All it right. sure does. Yeah. Marissa, so, could you just briefly? Sure. So um, our current ordinance that dictates how often garage and yard sales can take place um, is that we say that you cannot um, have more than two garage or yard sale permits issued. Um, to any person or for a sale on any given residence with a consecutive six-month period. So basically, the ordinance was drafted so that we did not have residential properties, in essence, becoming commercial properties through a non-stop garage or yard sale. Mm -hmm. The um, Lions Club, which is a nonprofit charitable organization, they raise money to help things, help local residents with things like heating fuel, glasses, diabetes testing. They, they really do a lot of, of really great work here in the community. And they raise money to help support those things in part by hosting yard sales in which vendors pay the Lions Club for a table. So they charge a table fee. And our ordinance does not currently actually allow for that. And it doesn't allow for them to do that. Um, it just doesn't allow for it in any, really any way. So by one simple sentence, I think, and I would certainly be happy to entertain suggestions of how I have missed something or how things could be improved, but by exempting nonprofit charitable organizations from the section, the provisions that dictate that permitting process for yard sales, um, the Lions Club would be able to, without breaking any laws, uh, host their yard sales and raise their funds. And I just do want to applaud the Lions Club for having been so proactive on this. They called very apologetically. They're like, I th we think we broke the law last year. Uh, we certainly didn't mean to. And we really don't want to break the law again. And we would, but we would be really sad if we couldn't raise money through this process. So um, I think that this sentence solves the problem. But I would welcome any feedback about any issues that you see with it. I, I know that, I mean, on the face of it, I would say this isn't a problem. I can only think of, <laughs> or something, you know, a yeah. couple of other, having had yard sales for the academic <coughs> calf team in my past, in my yard, um, 
what if someone was having a yard sale every week and they're saying, oh, I'm doing it for my church, or I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? So or, I would say that we could certainly put some language in there to yeah. tighten up, but it needs to be hosted on the site, owned by a nonprofit okay. charitable organization. Yeah, that's where I'm going okay. with that. Um, so, nonprofit charitable organizations are exempt from the above provisions providing gar garage slash yard sales take place on property owned by said. Does that solve that concern? It's bulky and awkward, but. Uh, that would address it for me. Input from um, I guess my only question is, and you know, it's hard because, yeah, they're, they're raising the funds to do good things, but the, does this, does that. I mean, they can basically have one every single weekend. I think it, it because would they're because they're exempt. So there's then there'd be still no. So essentially, I mean, I people, I, and I don't want to take any way, anything away from the not Lions Club because they do fabulous work, right? But people use the word nonprofit, and they automatically think that that means you're doing benevolent good things. In this case, it's true, but not every organization that's a nonprofit is just a form of business. Right. And so if I register as a nonprofit, and you can create a, a, a nonprofit just like you can create an LLC. So I just would want to be thoughtful and mindful about that because then I know some of the back history of where some of this came from, and I could see that situation have been <laughs> the same thing. With I, I, I established myself as a nonprofit. Now I can have a yard sale every weekend because um, my board of directors, which is my, my uncle, my brother, and my sister, um, you know, are advocating these. So I, I hate poking holes at something because I, I know the intent is really good. Yep. I do, I like the additional language that you said about right. having it on that site, but I still feel like yeah. frequency could be a concern. Like well, how do they say how often they do it? We did not weekend. get into that. Um, how, what if we were to... I think they've been doing it every weekend, but I could be wrong. Say right by me. I okay. by them all the time. What if the language, instead of what I had provided before, this would involve a little bit um, more forethought and, and council would be involved, but nonprofit charitable organizations are exempt from the above provisions with council approval. So that then, you know, annual council approval. So then if you are a nonprofit charitable organization, yeah, you have to go right. before council and say, we would like to be exempt from the garage yard sale ordinance for the, this coming season. And council would have the authority to say yes or no, and therefore establish whether or not it was in fact a um, legitimate charitable organization. On. Yeah, I, you know it's funny. I don't, uh, uh, I don't have a lot of energy for this one. Uh, I'm not a yard sale person, so I don't, you know, either a vendor or a buyer or whatever, you know. But I, I think it's great that people have them, uh, I, you know. And I appreciate the effort from the Lions Club to self-report. You know, I mean, I don't even know if they probably never got a warning. You know, I doubt they. Got so, I mean, so, so I'm. Uh, I appreciate the spirit of what they're doing here, um, and you know I'm okay with the language as proposed. And that that came from is that your language? Or? That is all me. That is me saying, how do we solve this problem? Uh, yeah. This seems like okay. an easy solution. Okay, so it's uh, never an easy solution, you know. Well, I yeah, can dream. Yeah, I. <laughs> so I, uh, just to net out on this, I'd say that I. Uh, uh, you know, then, then we put the language in, then we ask for an annual approval from the council, and it's like, uh, you know, I'm not sure I, I want to really be in the role or burden the council with the role of providing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, creating annual a bigger approval. Problem. Yeah, we're creating a bigger problem. So I just, I, I, uh, I mean, I, I respect that it's on the books and, you know, that it should be enforced. However, I, uh, you know, uh, are we really helping or creating uh, Unless we put a limit on nonprofits and said nonprofits are allowed to hold them on site, and I'm talking off the top of my head here, uh, two times a month between the months of May and I don't know. Well, that's again, true. You know, it's that's not like it's a 12 month thing because you don't have your ad sales. In the I know, but you right? know, it's kind of because you get well, they yeah. do, they do endure one. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I haven't offered much guidance on it other no, than that, I and know. I don't want to express uh, disinterest. Is this so. a problem? Is this an issue looking for a problem? <laughs> <laughs> and just leave it alone. 
I think that thing? because garage sale permits come from our town clerk's office, I do feel a little uncomfortable asking our town clerk. Like if we oh, have, yeah. the, if the Lions Club is coming yeah. in as good citizens and requesting a permit, and the town clerk is then put in a position where we're saying, this isn't really a problem, don't worry about it, that's not comfortable to me. Right. We cannot ask right. our staff to ignore the ordinances that are on the books. Mm -hmm. So if we wish to continue to, if we wish the Lions Club to be able to hold more than two yard sales in the course of a six month period, then we, I think it is appropriate for us to amend the ordinance to allow that to happen. So I could, okay, so as I'm chewing on this yeah. a little bit more, um, I would love to know, is it every weekend or how, how many do they hold from yeah. let's say May to whatever the season is? And I know this sounds like I'm making it more <laughs> no, complicated than it needs to be, but if it's, I think if it were every weekend, I would be probably more comfortable with twice a month. I think that would be a fair way to, to go about it. I mean, I, I, I can certainly be more on board with them doing it more frequently than someone in their house. <laughs> no? Yes? Uh. What am I missing? What am I not seeing? I know where this whole thing for the permit for the yard sales came from my neck of the woods. Yeah. That's where we had What's yard your sales. The, there was one person up, oh, I forget where, up by the fire station, Engine yeah. 5, who had a perpetual yard sale. Right? Yeah. And yeah. there were complaints about yeah. it all the time. Yeah. So that's where this whole I understand. permitting came from. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to be respectful of you know the ordinances and our duty to enforce them. But I have to be very honest. I would have more energy to strike the whole thing than I would to, to spend a lot of time and energy on adding additional language or requiring additional review by the council at a higher level. And again, this is with no data, okay? So I, if it's really a problem and if it's been, a, you know, but if it's, it's one of these things where there was a problem at one time and the person, you know, stopped having yard sales or moved away or whatever, I, you know, uh, you know, so I, so that's, that's my two cents on it. So. Well, come up to my neck of the woods <laughs> on, on the weekend. So hey, Pine Point Road is pretty, <laughs> pretty busy uh, yard sale territory. Anybody? So. So what's the pleasure of the council? Sorry, I uh, didn't mean to throw a monkey wrench into the machinery it's here. Right. So. You uh, just want to table it? I. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so do I have to make a motion? Uh, yeah, you do. Uh, yeah, I. Or you can force Katie to make a motion. Or you can suggest Pardon? Katie to make a motion. <laughs> you said, or you can ask Katie to make a motion. Uh, yeah, I just so you know, I, I explained myself. I don't really know much about it, um, but I, uh, I don't want to get a, ahead of my skis or uh, suggest that my fellow counselor should do that. And, and and I'm respectful of how, you know, these things develop. You know, it's usually is a an issue that needs attention. Um, but I don't want to turn it into a chicken dinner, you know, move away from a yard sale and now we're, you know, I mean. It's, it's, well, here, here's my problem with it, right? So, and I, and I see, have seen this a lot. We have a great citizen who came to us because they don't want to break the law, mm -hmm. right? They know mm -hmm. that their current practices, um, they are, essentially they are breaking the law. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to mm -hmm. find a way to do the right thing and to find a way yep. for us to work with them so that they're not breaking the law and they can continue to yep. do their good work. So I have a huge amount of respect for that. Um, and what I'm struggling is with what we know is the counter side to that, uh, you know, is that could somebody then misuse that mm -hmm. language to then be running a business that is called a nonprofit, but it's a for-profit, you know, somewhere else. That's, that was, so I think the language about the site piece mm -hmm. helps. Um, I, I guess I might want to chew on this a little bit. Sure. I would be probably more apt to find out how often, how many mm -hmm. a summer do they do. Mm -hmm. If it's six, great, bam, I'm done. I, that'd be fine with me. And then we and could, I think we could use that language, but um, I think so. I'm, if it's okay with you, I think I'll make a motion mm -hmm. to try to further investigate get a little bit more information. Um, I'd like to help them, you know, follow the law because that's what they're asking. I think that's a good thing. One second. So that's my motion, that we table it and get a little bit more information. Yeah, I, I would second the, the suggestion to table and get Until more information. Until okay. the next meeting. Next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I would just remind you that we don't have to solve it. We can toss it to the council. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Won't yeah. they be happy? Well, yeah, but they would be wrong. <laughs>
So, uh, all in favor of tabling till the next meeting? That's it. We'll move it to the next meeting. Boy, we'll move everything right to the next meeting. That's okay. <laughs> all right. Last but not least, <laughs> uh, marijuana ordinance development. Larissa, solve that eight minutes. Let's go. <laughs> all right. So. I have provided with each, each of you with a thought organizer. I don't know if you wish to use it or not. I will not be offended if you do not. But um, we've got eight different possible ordinances to develop. We have cultivation of marijuana. We have manufacture of marijuana products. We have testing of marijuana and marijuana products. And we have um, the retail stores. And for each of those four categories, you need to decide whether you would like to move ordinance language forward um, for medical, and you need to decide if you want to move language forward for adult use. Mm -hmm. So I have a series of questions that our friends in South Portland used to kind of help guide their conversation, and I thought if you were amenable, we would kind of work through that same set of questions. Um, and at any point, you can say, I'm done working through their questions. Let's just move on. <laughs> okay. um, so I thought if, if you, so we have to, um, they, we want to kind of establish right off the bat, um, are you interested in exploring any of these options? Because if, if the answer is universally no, then we have a much shorter conversation to be having. But if you think that you are interested in exploring some of these options, then we need to kind of so what do, do you that. So think? Let's go down. Yes, no. So. Um, no maybes. OK. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being it's, it's good to set expectations, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I think uh, just saying no, we're not going to opt in on anything. Uh, I don't think that works for okay. the town, based upon what I've heard. Uh, uh, but in terms of what it ought to be, is that what you're looking for now? Well, I think let's, yes no, let's no. just answer the. Just are we going to have this conversation? Which ones should we start to be thinking about? Yeah. Language yeah. So I'd say. Uh, yeah, so I mean, if we look at the dimensions here, so it's it's well, it's tech, can right? I interrupt? Yeah, sure. Just back up. Yeah. We're doing way, way, way high. Do you it. even want to talk about this? Does uh, Discover want to talk about opting into marijuana? I don't care what it is. Yes or no? No. I think we should talk about it. Okay. Great. Okay. I say yes. Yeah, I I agree. Great. Right. Okay. Then, then, away. We then talk let's about start it. with cultivation. Okay. okay. Thanks. So <laughs> let's talk about cultivation first. I have a hard time with You're like me. Yeah. So um, let's talk about. So currently, the town of Scarborough has medical cultivators in town. Mm -hmm. We have medical people that are growing medical marijuana in both our industrial zones and in um, rural farming zones. Okay. So does the town of Scarborough wish to allow for more people to start growing? and as well as existing facilities to expand their grow operations for medical use. So we're going to break this down into, we're going to talk medical first, mm -hmm. and then we'll shift to adult, if that if that's yeah. works for you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for medical cultivation, do you have interest in having ordinance language brought forward that would open that up as an option for incoming people? I would say yes. I'm a yes. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. Great. Um, and let's then talk about adult use. Currently, as I said, we have medical growers. Do you wish to allow for, do you wish to see ordinance language come forward that would allow for adult use cultivation? Can I ask a question? Yes. Regarding the law. Does the law restrict it? It's personal use is, is no restriction, right? So right. Mun municipalities cannot right. restrict that. So when we're talking about adult use cultivation, we're talking about um, companies or whatever who are growing it to sell it for commercial purposes. Okay. Yes. I, I just want to make that clear. Yeah, we are in no way looking to regulate what individual humans can do in their individual homes. That is not our right or our interest. Mm -hmm. can, I I'm a yes. can I Can she you talk about cultivation, not sales? And so I want to make sure that it's that I that Oh, yeah, but I'm saying. So you're selling it to some, like cultivators are selling it to someone somebody. within the wholesale market. Selling it to the recreational right. users, not the medical right. users. But cultivation is just growing. It is just, just growing, growing it. but okay. it, our expectation okay. would be that Thank there you. must be a market for what has been grown. 
So it's still a commercial activity. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I'm not that well informed about how cultivation differs from medical versus adult use. Uh, you know, is it, I mean, you, you, let me just stay with me for a minute. So if I think, well, medical cultivation sounds okay, but does that mean you're gonna have larger scale, is it larger scale cultivation more typical for medical use as opposed to adult use? I don't really know what would be more likely there. If it's large scale, I'm not sure I'd be so keen on that. So, so I, yeah. Well, my other, I'm sorry, can I yes, ask a, that's my another question. question? On top of that, mm -hmm. yeah. if I'm a grower and I have a license to sell to medical users and I have a license to sell to recreational users, I, can, I, I grow in this, I grow, I'm not growing the, growing it differently. I still grow it the same way, right? Mm -hmm. So do you see what I'm saying? Like, call it, like, why are, why, school, why are they separate? You have to separate it because um, medical growers can only sell to a medical person who sells it to somebody who has a medical permit. Mm -hmm. So a rec or a, uh, adult use, you could only, or you could sell it to. You can't uh, have. Well, you, you could sell it to the adult it use can't be people. Plan. I'd say if you want to justify <laughs> which ones are bigger, recreational are usually the bigger side. Medical's more. Because, I mean, as a medical grower, I can only grow as much as, as medical patients I can have. But adult use kind of is the state has anyone under 21 years old. Yeah, there's still the state has a of the <laughs> Huh. The, at the moment, the the way that things are kind of drafted at the moment, my understanding is that you may not grow medical and adult use in the same property. They need to be split into separate properties. And that, no, separate properties can mean, like, we could have, this could be one large room, and we could put a, a barrier wall right. that was separating my medical plants from my adult use plants. So they... So you have now have two separate properties. Um, the, I think that the reason that they have separated them out is because there are going to... And we saw this consistently across our survey data, right? There are people that are really very comfortable with medical, anything to do with medical marijuana, because they see it as a, um, a medicine that people need and, and are relying on. But they are still uncomfortable right. with people using it as a recreational, recreational. drug. So there, I think that the state has separated them out so that municipalities must choose be, to allow for communities to embrace medical marijuana use if they wish to, while if they are not comfortable with adult use, they don't have to. Okay. Um, so it would be, I think, very unexpected to find a community that said, we are all in with adult use cultivation, but don't you dare grow that medical stuff here. Like, that's probably not going to happen, but the state's giving towns the option. But the, the growth, I mean, the grower is just a, another business, right? Like any other business. Yes. So just because they, we may say they can have a growing facility somewhere to be determined um, by our ordinances, by our ordinances. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that they could sell in our town. Oh, absolutely. Okay. These are so separate issues. Are all, these separate are issues. All, absolutely it's separate. separate. Okay. This is just about growing. And you also will so be asked... So for me, I would be a yes on that one okay. as well. Yeah. So can I ask a process question? Mm -hmm. I have to confess, I feel woefully uh, uneducated on uh, what the experience has been with this. So even a simple poll like the one we're trying to conduct now, and I'm not trying to, you know, wreck the exercise because I you got to start someplace. <laughs> I have a hard time even with this level of, uh, you know, yes and no, because I don't, I don't know what I don't know. Well, and I think for me, it's just an opportunity for Larissa to get uh, yeah. working on some of the language, and then we're going to be ferreting out yeah. the, the, what that is yeah. or isn't, and whether we want it or don't want it. As we go through it, yeah. Um, so it's going to be over any. Again, I, from my perspective, it's kind of one of those yeah. things that I agree. I and I'm there's so much unknown with this. Yeah. Um, but if we don't start somewhere, yeah. And that's all. This a this a okay. lot of work right here. All right. So I can change my vote later. Uh, Absolutely. Yes. And with cultivation, I'll remind you for the for those of you that attended the sessions with Phil, no he. He talked a little bit about how in cultivation you are gonna we're gonna need to then narrow it down further. Yes. Okay. What square footage of canopy yeah. are you going to allow? Are you going to allow for nurseries? Yeah. Are, like okay. we've got enough other choices this that we are in a kind of a giant choose your own adventure book. Do you remember these as a kid, right? <laughs> so we're choosing we're we're on we're in chapter one and we've got to get going on a path and then we will have many other options to branch from that path. Right. And if we want to take a chapter out of our book, we can. We can. Yes, we so I, if that gives you some comfort. Great. Okay. 
I will be coming back to you at the next yeah. meeting with a whole yeah. new set of questions. I'm still willing to play. Okay, great. But I think all of those things are the piece things that we need to see. Yeah. Because yes. those are that's gonna Great. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All okay. Right. So so yes, we think we we think yeah. we would like to see some language come forward about allowing for adult use cultivation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I ask some questions about that before we move on to the next mm -hmm. category? If you have them now, I would love to hear questions you think you are going to want to have answered in the next phase of this. Alternatively, if you could individually, because we do not have private meetings through email, okay, if you could individually think about what those questions are for you and get them to me in the next couple of weeks so that I will have time to come right. back to you and in right. a productive manner at our next meeting Great. with answers to those questions, Great. I would really appreciate that. Yeah. One thing I'd offer right now is just generally, I know we've discussed the possibility of getting samples of neighboring towns or, you know, right. you know and oh, that's what we've been doing. gone through we've this already. Doing. So, I mean, I, that will help me and uh, help inform me. And, um, or including, yeah. you know, what kind of yeah. facilities are already out there, yeah. what are they yeah. seeing, right. so as the early yeah. uh, I've had successes and failures of those Cons. So I, I realize it's a journey, but I do want to clarify. I was not in favor of adult use. We haven't gotten there yet. We haven't gotten there. Stop okay. jumping in. So I, but I see you no, checking no. boxes, and I'm. That's, that's her own nuts. Really Don't much. cheat! Don't cheat! Keep your eyes on your own paper, <laughs> Councilor <laughs> Hamill. Okay. Problem following directions. All right. So moving on to the next choosing your own adventure opportunity here. Uh, we have manufacture of medical marijuana products. So that would be extraction. Okay, of um, the chemicals that are in marijuana to be used to manufacture things like edibles and lotions and tinctures and every other thing that you would want to put products out of a marijuana plant into. Um, and those, we would imagine, would be housed in our industrial zones only, mm -hmm. as they would be a manufacturing facility. Mm -hmm. So again, the question is, just to kind of move us forward, are you interested in seeing language that would provide for um, manufacture of medical marijuana products in the yes. town? Yes. 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 Okay. And how about for the manufacture of adult use marijuana products? Yes. Yes. I have a hard time separating the two anyway. It's yeah, I think I'd say no on that. Okay. Um, then I would need account I would need you guys as an ordinance committee to give me I would need a formal action then. Well, we'll get to that to the end. To the Let's end. get to the end. Yeah. Okay. We'll wait. All right. And again, go ahead, Don. Uh, so you need unanimity. Unanimity. Okay. Yeah. Or I'm going to need a vote. Like, at the end a of this, we're going to need to take... Because I, to be, I need to be directed. <laughs> I can't go off on my own and just okay. bring you back ordinances that I think you should have. Very well. That would be breaking my rules for my job. All right. Testing of medical marijuana and marijuana products. Testing facilities are places where um, manufacturers and growers would sell, would send both plants and products that have been manufactured for testing for things like contamination or mold or THC levels to be labeled on those products. They would again be something that we would expect to see in our industrial areas only. Yes. 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 For both medical and adult? Yes. No. Okay. Just medical. Sorry. Jean Marie. What? I said yes. I said yes. I'm Great. just picking up the door. I know you are. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. And finally, um, the last one, which is certainly the one that brings up the most conversation, <laughs> um, is would you like to see any ordinance language that would allow for medical marijuana retail storefronts? No. I move that we punt this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a no. Yeah, I'm a no. At this well. point. Really? Yeah, I'm an too. Okay. And I'm if for adult use? No. Oh no, I'm sorry. I was a yes for I thought you already did all retail. the medicals. No. Retail. No. Okay. We're, we're, so I did it. I did We're going it. left to right. I did it for medical and you did I apologize. it. The other way. So, so for I'm a medical yes. marijuana I'm a retail yes stores. For medical retail stores. I'm a no for adult use retail stores. You are a Jean Marie. let's start Jean Marie Medical? Oh, I'll say yes on medical, but no on adult use. Okay, Don, on medical retail Unanimous. stores? Unanimous. A yes on medical and no on adult. Okay. All right. Great. Some other? Go ahead. Can I just bring something up? I was in Augusta yesterday, and because um, I was up there talking money with people, I was told by the chair of the 
there is going to be uh, a potential bill up there on a local option sales tax on marijuana products. Um, so just so you'll know. I mean, we, we're on shifting sands a bit here. And to be honest with you, I'll be, I'll be right up front about this, that I'd be more apt to support the potential of adult use if we got any money out of it. But we don't. We get nothing. Zippity do that. So anyway, okay. I just want to make that statement. Some questions that I would like to ask about these different categories, if I may, so that I know kind of what sort of ordinances you might want to see. Should any of these businesses be licensed by the town? All of them. Licensed by the town or by the all of them by the town so I can get money out of it. And we would collect licensing fees. We would oh, collect license license fees. fees. Okay. These I'll guys will look at me going, oh no. I'll fly with that. <laughs> I'll fly with that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Seems as we don't get any from the state. <laughs> okay. Um, if they are licensed. Do you have a, something to think about for next time? And I will write this up to in, and send it as email. Something to think about for next time, unless you have thoughts right off the bat. Um, what sort of requirements would be imposed in that license? Background checks, yes. security plans, yes. an operation plan. Yes. I think I would add to that um, odor control systems yes. is one of the things that we heard about. Yes. Okay, um, and so that would be another. That would yes be yes on all of those. Yes, yes on all of those. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just. Good thing I have my thought organizer. Okay. Um, um, and do you wish to see for any of these categories, cultivation, ma manufacture, testing, or on the medical side, retail stores, do you wish to see a cap on the number of them that would be allowed inside the town? That's one of the authorities that we have. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say yes. Mm -hmm. I would need a lot more information. I'd need to know what other... Yeah, I don't... That's weird. So the idea, I think, behind that is that... Um, I don't like having ice cream stores. Mm -hmm. I know. And, and it is... A, it is. Yeah, I mean, I just, does it put you in, I a, know, in a place where you're not being fair and, you know, equitable and being in a business on, practice? And being in, on said co board, I know there's some concern about all the warehousing space or whatever getting all yeah. taken up by marijuana. Well, and it's and the same conversation that we have about car dealers. Oh, how many car dealers? Um, you know, do we, we don't want to be Sacco Auto Mile. Right. Right? And right. so it's for me, it's, and that's us. So I'm not saying yes or no. I'm just saying yeah. I yeah. want to think that through a little right. more. Yeah, I would go with that. Yeah, I, I would build on that. It's not, it's not only just a number, but it's also size. It's a, you know, it's a couple factor question. Okay, so something for us to bring up to, for top, something yes. to be prepared to speak yes. to next time. Yeah. Again, I would ask that if you have specific questions that you need data on prior to, yeah. in order to further that conversation, if you can get those questions to me. And again, I'll send an email out reminding everyone about the conversation. Does it work well for you if I provide you um, with something like a prepared Google form that separates out the questions and gives you an opportunity to write your thoughts within yes. that form? Is that useful to you? Or do you prefer to just send it directly as an email? Google Google easy for me. Great. I'll make a form. Um, and then do we want to consider, so if you remember at the la what, one of the sessions with Phil, somebody was asking about um, how the ordinance would be drafted if it would be kind of folded into our existing land use code as a permitted use within different districts. And Phil Saucier, our attorney, suggested that what he finds the cleanest and most efficient is to simply create an overlay zone that, you know, that says this is our mar a commercial marijuana manufacturer overlay zone and it, it pockets. So I guess I would like, if possible, some direction on whether you like that idea of an overlay zone or if you like the idea of folding it into existing land use regulation as a permitted use. I like overlays, but, and, and I would go with that also just because I like if my attorney's saying that. And just to remind my fellow counselors, Phil is become like the expert in the state on all of this and the legal yeah, stuff with this. So Yeah, no, I, I think that's preferred because if you, you go with existing land uses and then every time the existing land uses yeah. change, then all of a sudden yeah. you've got that problem to deal with as well, whereas with the overlay you don't have right. to pick it again. Okay, great. Um, what then further down the line, part of our conversation will be, and I will bring you very good maps and so that you guys can kind of really think about where you want this is going to be help. We're going to need to create where that overlay zone. What? Save yourself. <laughs> Were you picking on me? No, no, it was funny. 
was good. It's getting old. I thought you said day. I thought you were gonna bring samples, is what I thought. <laughs> <you were saying. laughs> Lotions is you know. Oh, C B D products only. Right. Yes. Okay. So of course. Um, <laughs> Coffee by design products. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh, I wonder if they're gonna have fun with that. Oh, they will. Oh yeah. Of okay. They will. Um, and then, do we want to have... The public's going to wonder about it. <laughs> they already do. Um, something else for us to be thinking about, and this will be part of our, a larger conversation later, but please have it kind of in your mind. Do we want to think about having performance standards that are specific to marijuana businesses? Okay, so things, for example, should they be separated from any sensitive uses? So currently we might prohibit, um, you know, a liquor store might not be allowed to be within a certain number of feet from a church or a school, right. do we want to think about yes. that and um, yes. daycares maybe being yes. included or, or things like that? Yes. Um, yes. Should they be separated from one another? So if you're going to allow medical marijuana retail stores, do you wish to have um, only a certain number per whatever yes. linear feet per of store? Uh, right. yep. Yeah, we don't want the whole um, innovation district to be, to right. be okay. dedicated. To and then stuff. also the question would be, <laughs> Well, another question that we're going to need to address, um, and not tonight, but kind of moving forward, is can two or more activities be co-located? So can you be a cultivator who also manufactures in the same um, area who then also has a storefront in that same area? So those are some questions that we're going to need to be talking about. Um, and then, again, um, this idea of is there a space to create a, an odor management plan requirement? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Uh, are we on no, I, I do. I, I apologize. I trust their judgment on the last <laughs> few things. I got another meeting in 15 minutes, and I have a phone call I have to make. So, all right, you're excused. Thank you. All right, <laughs> and that's actually we're at the end of my list. Don't forget to, to do your homework. I, I, I said to myself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. When they said all no to the uh, retail sales and adult use, does that mean that the town is opting out? Yes. yes. Okay. So there's no further discussion no. on that. Okay. That's that's done. That's, I, I just. I thought so. I just yeah. to be well, you mentioned if that was the addition of the T spot, you would reconsider, didn't you? I may, but she's but right for right now. Three. We don't okay. know. That's I'm I'm don't want to deal on hy hypotheticals, but we can always change our mind later. But for now, I'm not a fan of the adult use retail. It's just my opinion. Then I think that this is what I would like to just confirm, and I don't think it actually does need a vote because you're just directing staff. I'm hearing that by majority vote. Staff is directed to bring back examples of ordinance for medical and adult use cultivation, medical and adult use manufacture of marijuana products, medical and adult use testing of marijuana products, and medical retail storefronts. Mm -hmm. That's normal. Yep. Okay. Right to me. So at the April meeting, I will, by looking at what we have for examples of ordinance language from surrounding communities, I will bring you back some options. For you to kind of work through, I will also bring you another set of choose your own adventure. We will focus this on cultivation as far as you know what are we looking at for canopy square footage per for property? How many? And I think a, a really good question to be asking is what is the total square footage of space in the town that you wish to have as canopy? Because Sedco, I do I do think brings a very valid point. It is a we have very limited industrial space, and um, it is not considered a it is a low value use of that space, if you will. So from a tax base right. standpoint, it is not necessarily a good investment for our space. Is anyone working on a definition of canopy? That definition drives from the me state. insane. I will check into that. Can I uh, say what canopy might be? It would be, in other states, it's the square footage of the plants. So, you're, so my uh, warehouse might be 5,000 right. square feet, but the plants are really <coughs> Uh, maybe 3,000, so you measure from all the edge of all your plants, all the little areas of the building. That's, so, I mean, so that leaves a, a space that's not, I mean, that you're not growing right. in, you know, for, for <coughs> watering. I mean, I get the theory of it, but it's interesting. We haven't found a legal definition yet, that's even in the state or anything. In states, like, that's how that, it kind of, <coughs> they, they yeah. measured it. So I don't yeah. Know. I'm just throwing that out there because it's kind of just, you know, being on the ordinance end of this. Unless you get a legal definition, sometimes it can be whatever people find it. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to make it easier for everybody. So those are the items that I will, so I'm also okay. directed, I, I believe that staff has been directed to create <coughs> kind of a, a guided questionnaire for you to be thinking about prior to our next meeting yep. that you will each be filling out as separate entities, not as a group. Yep. Um, and I will be able to, in your agenda packet, um, 
share out back to you what your your yeah. your peers have said. So we'll be prepared to have a, yeah. a full conversation. Does that work <coughs> for all of you? Sounds good to me. Okay. Vaughn, you're okay with that? I am fine with that. <coughs> Can we talk, do you want to talk about next month's agenda or is that something <coughs> that you want to do later? I just would like to. Okay, so I'm hearing that for next month we are bringing back the traffic <coughs> ordinance. Um, we are bring and Don, you and I are going to meet so I can hear all of your specific <coughs> questions yeah, regarding yeah. that to come back yeah. with, with good answers. I need a couple of days. <coughs> um, and the, we're kind of back <coughs> with the garage sale ordinance. Yep. Um, and I'm going to find out from the Lions Club and maybe invite them to attend if that would be helpful. <coughs> yeah, that would be helpful. Okay. Um, we are bringing back the contract zone ordinance, but not the current <coughs> language that's moving on to council. But we are going to bring back a discussion about whether or not SEDCO's concerns. Right. Do you want that on your next agenda, or is that something you were asking long range planning to take up in their workflow? Oh, that's a good year? question. And, yeah. and it, it just to say, it would be a little while till the long range planning committee gets back to it. Yeah. If, um, would you say, Tony? <laughs> the only thing I'd say is that I, the input we had on the uh, the changes we're proposing for the amendment and the application uh, uh, for the contract zones, the input we had from the long range planning group was very <clears throat> helpful. They're informed, and I think it would be uh, a smart move for us to get their input on that first before it comes. I would agree because right. some of those long range people yeah. are on that. Involved with the yeah. set go and the so you're get it on one, so let's yeah, do that. They're okay. very well informed, they give us great input, and they, you know, that's going to be more more efficient. So, we're going to throw that at long range plan, yeah. yeah and, that's and, you, and, <laughs> and, you know, I'll, I'll just I don't know how long that discussion is going to take with long range planning because I think, as uh, Councillor Hamill brought up, I do think that is a more substantive yeah, discussion than right. really what we've been talking about. It may be one meeting, it may be quick. I just don't want to make it's any commitments. It's not a rush. To me, it's not like we've got a right. huge so, rush on so it either. I, I just don't want to necessarily put it on your next agenda with right. the expectation that it rushes right back to you. Right. Um, no, no. We'll have plenty I'm to do next month. Yep. It's okay. Right. Um, <coughs> our town clerk has asked if the ordinance committee would be willing to entertain a discussion about food trucks oh and God. getting some sort of ordinance in place that would um, allow her to better navigate that scene. Yep. Yes. I'm okay with that because the season okay. is here. Then uh -huh. I will. Um, Use the food trucks. I agree. <laughs> uh, do you wish for me to? Okay. So given so that. Do you wish for next month to simply be an introduction and discussions on the topic, or do you want me to come and include in your packet examples of what language could look like? Let's do both. Can we do both? Well, or we would be allowed to discuss the language I brought forward, but if you, so if you would like to see, if you would like to see examples of what language could look like allowing for food trucks to operate in Scarborough, I would. I would. bring that forward. Okay. You know, it seems like a good place to start because I think that's one of those things that came up where vending and that sort of activity, you know, was expressly right? So I know. I so know. we can maybe cut our teeth on food trucks and then we go Great. on from there. So, Great. Yeah. And I think that's all I've got. Yeah. Uh, do I have a motion for adjournment? Uh, or do you have something else? Uh, well, do we have comment? Do we have uh, I'll comment? allow comment. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd just like to say uh, that was a productive meeting. I thought we did a nice job of really listening to people and being flexible and, uh, you know, want to encourage uh, participation like <clears throat> we've had. So, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. And yeah. a tribute to the chair. I, well, I like to get people involved, and I don't like to be too stiff next about things unless I have to. Uh, <laughs> That's the old school teacher in me. <laughs> All right, motion to adjourn. Motion to, and before we get, you know, too complimentary one another, I'll have a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second it. All in favor? There we go. Yeah. We're good. Great. Thank you.